Hello, everybody. This is Ryan from iTry Running Programs, and we're into week nine of the Hal Higdon Advanced One Marathon Training Program. And this week's kind of an interesting one because I got to have two rest days, so that was pretty exciting. But the other really cool thing about this week is a half marathon time trial or race uh, that Hal recommends. So I did this personally just on a, you know, kind of local running path that, that I like to run on and have run, ran that distance at multiple times on that path to give a good idea of how the training stimulus has paid off so far. But leading up into that half marathon time trial, there's a lot of easy running at the start of the week, a three mile easy run followed by a nine and then a four mile easy run. And then one workout being a six by 800 workout um, that admittedly I did not do very well with. So I wasn't necessarily leading strongly into this half marathon time trial, but we'll, we'll ultimately see how that pans out. Now, in terms of the overall week, because of the rest days and the overall low amount of mileage, this panned out to 31 total miles, which if my recollection serves correct, is actually the least amount of miles that I've run at this point in the program. So my, my guess would be, if I was how, that this is kind of a, a double dip week where you get to do a couple of really hard workouts, a six by 800 workout and a half marathon time trial, but you also get an overall decrease in your overall mileage so that you're not going to suffer from overtraining, not doing too much too soon. And so those two rest days leading into that half marathon is just so welcomed at this point, if you're like me, and this is kind of higher mileage for me, um, might seem like low mileage to many watching the video, but for me personally, this, this can feel like high mileage when I was getting up into the 50 and high 40 miles per, uh, per week running that I was doing. Now, in terms of the earlier runs for the week, uh, the first run was a three mile easy run, ran at 7.33 pace, much, much too fast for this type of run, and especially starting off at 7.58 and then jumping down to 7.20 and 7.21 per mile after that not preferred. Uh, once again, as I've been harping on, you've heard me, if you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me a million times say, I'm really trying to run my easy runs easy. So this run would be kind of somewhat of a failed run for me because I'm going too hard on an easier day, especially with a, a very key workout at the end of the week and really two key workouts at the end of the week. This isn't really what you want to be doing. And you can see the pacing just basically edged up all throughout the run. In some cases, was in the low sixes. So that's really not what you want to be doing on an easy run where technically about a 620-ish pace would be like a 10K race pace for me. So that's not good on any level. But overall, at the end of the day, the run was completed. I suppose I shouldn't complain, but yes, I would have preferred to run it a little bit slower. Now, the second uh, easy run, I did exactly what you would want to do, which was run it very, very easy. So my nine mile run ran it overall about 847 pace. Uh, you can see the only thing I don't like about this run is in easy runs, I don't like to see myself actually slow down as the run goes on because that means I started too quickly. I, I want to see that mileage stay very consistent in terms of pacing. Uh, so to start in the 830s and even kind of the low 820-ish range and then kind of ease down into the nines, that's not necessarily great to see. Not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. As you can imagine, you can see a dip overall. And what you see here, once again, kind of weird, starting off too quickly, getting to a point where I was in the low sevens and then walked for a little bit, I'm assuming probably to use the restroom since it was early in the morning, uh, but just kind of weird, inconsistent pacing here. So not a giant fan, uh, not a huge issue. Once again, overall, it's a time under feet run, um, but would have liked to see a little bit more consistency here. So, so not a huge issue, but just something to keep in the back of your mind. If you're kind of, if you're, Doing this ideally, I suppose, is that your easy runs are truly very, very easy and they're very consistent with pacing. And that's something I've been struggling with most of the time, strangely enough, more with the easy runs than really the workouts. The workouts I've been able to maintain a relatively 630 to 645 pace for my workout um, um, mileage pacing. And then my easy runs are just all over the map in pacing. So really something that I need to continue to work on throughout this program. Now, uh, in terms of the 800 uh, meter effort, I believe this is supposed to be, oh no, this is another easy run, my four mile easy run for the week, excuse me. Uh, this one was again done much more what I would like to see. Very consistent, right in that 830 to 850 range. So just pretty much a perfect easy run for me, nice and easy for that four miles, nothing too crazy to report back on there. 
Now, uh, theoretically, this was supposed to be my six by 800 meter day. And normally I will title my workouts to let you know that it's a workout, but this is one that I kind of, for lack of a better term, failed kind of miserably. Um, I started far too late in the morning. I, I teach on Monday and Wednesdays for my day job. And it just, you know, just kind of, it was all out of loop. I was, got out of the house too late. I was a little bit groggy from waking up so late and just everything wasn't panning out the way that I should. So ultimately I only completed, I believe, yes, three repetitions. Um, you can see most of them done in around the three minute-ish pace overall for these 800 repeats. So not bad necessarily, but just not consistent. You can see I even tried to start a fourth rep and I was just over it. I just couldn't do it. My, my calves were killing me, um, just super, super tight. And so I didn't want to risk a calf strain or Achilles tendonitis. So I just decided I would just sit this one out and just run a little bit extra easy mileage. You can see here at the end, and I was just going to run this out and then come back to my home. And I couldn't even do that. I was just too sore. So that actually kind of worried me leading into the half marathon time trial going into the end of the week. I did know that I would have two days of rest after this workout, which I did. Um, and the overall 800s that I ran weren't horrible. They just weren't great. But, you know, I was really doing so well with these 800 meter repeat workouts. So this was somewhat of a disappointing workout. It wasn't giving me a lot of good mojo going into the half marathon time trial, but the half marathon time trial went absolutely perfectly. Uh, I couldn't have asked for much more in terms of what I would have wanted to see at this point in my training. So just for context, prior to this half marathon, my best time uh, in a race, even for a half marathon was an hour and 44 minutes, which I think speaks to really kind of the, the length of time that I've been running. I've only been running since 2017 and very inconsistently at that. So to get this time down to 129, after nine weeks of serious training, I was really, really excited because if you dig back into my kind of straw, the annals of my Strava data, about 10 or 11 weeks ago, I just ran a half marathon for fun in the neighborhood. And I was running it hardish. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily all out, but I was running, I was, I was trying to set a PR and I couldn't do it. And I think my ending time ended up being an hour and 50 minutes. And that was nine or 10 weeks ago. So only a couple of months ago. So you can see, I think for those who fit my background, this program can have a really big impact. Because if you're somebody who's just done a lot of easy mileage, hasn't been running terribly long, but you're probably, you know, you have enough time under your feet to probably be a more intermediate advanced runner. Um, this type of program can have a huge stimulus. 50% of the way through, uh, I was able to run a, a 648 per mile pace uh, for a half marathon. This was a huge, huge uh, confidence boost. I, I couldn't have really written this up. I went into this hoping to maybe run 135. Um, if that was going to be perfect, like 135 was going to be my perfect day. Um, so in terms of how this workout worked out, just because not to, to play a pun there, but how it ended up working out was that I decided I would go down, as I alluded to before, to the Monterey area. There's a really beautiful wreck trail for those of you who end up visiting this area. Great for running, relatively flat. It's technically uphill for the first six and a half miles, and then technically downhill for the net for the last six and a half, if you do it as an out and back style the way that I do. So it starts in Seaside, California. You end up in Pacific Grove, and you end up back in Seaside if you follow the route that I take. Now, my goal was to, to start hard and maintain hard. And I was just going to run off a of field. I didn't look at my Strava app at any point. I didn't want to know what I was running time-wise. Minus one point. I just wanted to see what I was running at the six, my, six and a half mile mark, just so I knew what I could do on the way back and, and estimate what type of time I could run. So I came out relatively quick, first mile, 625 pace. I believe that was actually the fastest mile of the day, funny enough. And then followed up with a really strong 633. I was at my most tired right here at mile two. That's what's really interesting about this run. I just came out probably a little too quick. I'm probably far more in like 635 pace for a half marathon if I was going to really go for like an A race type effort. Um, so that 625 mile was probably just a little bit too much to start. 
And so you can see my time actually started to slow all the way up to about the six mile marker. And then once I got to about the six and a half mile mark, I looked at my Strava app on the phone and I went, I'm right at 45 minutes. Uh, if I just can run this a little bit faster on the way in, I can break 130, which was not even remotely a goal for the day. So I was super excited at this point and that boosted my energy up a bunch. I was really, really excited for the back half of the run. So started the seventh, the back half really of the six and a half um, point, but also the seventh mile here at about 658 then followed with my last mile in the seven minute range here. There is a little bit of undulation in this particular mile, not a tons, but you do get a little bit of uphill. So that explains uh, the slowdown there. Then from there, everything I did in from mile nine through 13 plus was all done at the uh, faster than seven minute per mile pace. So really just a cool way to see that I had the, the energy in my legs to really get after it and to, to kick a 635 and a 642 in these kind of nine, 10th and 11th miles. That was good. Now I did suffer from a small side ache from 12 to 13. And that might be a little bit of, I was running maybe a little harder than I perceived in terms of effort because this run didn't feel hard. In fact, at mile 10, strangely, I ran into a coworker uh, a colleague from where I work, as I was running by, so I kind of slowed down just enough to wave and say hi, and then keep going as quickly as I could. So really, I wasn't so in the zone or so uh, mentally fatigued that I couldn't even, you know, kind of talk to other people. I was, I was in good spirits the whole run through and had a, a really fun time running this run. And to have the time that I had on top of that, it's just icing on the cake. So overall, you can see there was a lot of undulation in terms of the pacing for me. It kind of ebbed up to seven, then would jump back down to 630. And this actually feels like this happened. I know the Strava app can be a little bit less than perfect at actually you know, estimating your pace, but this actually, you could feel it. And part of that's because when I was going downhill, I was running it as hard as I could. And when I was going uphill, I was you know, kind of taking uh, the foot off the gas pedal a little bit, making sure I was getting some water, reminding myself to, to, to breathe properly, to run properly, all of those good things. Uh, at the halfway mark here, you can see I really did try to kind of shoot out and I ran hard down this hill. There's a little hill here and I ran as hard as I could to kind of set the tone. And outside of this little slowdown I had at this, this is a hill right here that's kind of long. Uh, it's subtle. It's not a very hard hill to run but you can see it and it can be kind of daunting from the standpoint of it's like the minute I get over this hill, it's all downhill. Um, so I try to just run this. I tried to run this part nice and easy, not go too hard. Uh, and then just try to run as hard as I could into the finish. So overall, uh, once again, just a really exciting run. What you don't see in these top results is that this was my best estimated half marathon time, my best estimated, obviously 20, 15 K and 10 mile effort but also my best estimated 10K time at 42 minutes. So really interesting to see how well I ran this, uh, considering the lead up to this was probably less than ideal in terms of this specific week. And even a couple of weeks before that, you saw a missed long run, uh, a missed goal pace run. So really this probably kind of came a little bit out of left field. And this wasn't like everything went perfect in terms of the way that I felt. Um, because there, you know, there were points where I didn't feel perfect in this run, but it went really well from a, a mental standpoint. It's kind of, you're, you're sitting there, I'm going to run this as a race and I have goals in this race that I'm going to hit, which was run the downhills hard, run the flats hard, run the uphill slow, take that as a breather, uh, time to get some water, things like that. That's how I want to run CIM. And so I ran that style for this half marathon and it went perfect. So if I can have this type of day on race day for CIM, I think that would really be awesome. And it gives me hope that I think, you know, an A goal of maybe a 305-ish marathon isn't completely out the window. I still think that's a pretty big reach, uh, but I think now more like a 310, 315 marathon is, is very reasonable based on this time right now, given that I still have another, you know, three or four weeks of bigger stimulus and then we can start to taper a little bit from there so overall a really fun week a really exciting week it gives me some ideas of kind of how to talk about getting this time down here because i know a lot of folks want to break the 130 uh, mark for their half marathon and i i think this is one of those things where you know to, to give a prelude to that video 
following a structured training program really, really helps because you don't have to guess what to do right. You just have to follow kind of the expert's guidance. And if you do what he tells you to do, you'll do just fine. So overall, a very exciting week gives me a lot of motivation for the back half of this program. I'm only 50% of the way done, so I got more running to do. Uh, and hopefully you'll get to see some more of that as I continue to make these videos. Take care, everybody.